Okay, you can see we have our rack ready. We're almost ready. We have the bearings here. Uh, there's no difference between the top and bottom. Just make sure the tang goes into the tang slot on the cap. And then up above, we have our piston rings. And uh, those go in. Notice they're numbered one, two, three for one, two, three. And we'll go in more detail about how those get installed in just a second. Okay, three rings. These or technically six rings. These three rings make up the oil ring, which goes in the bottom here. The second ring is the oil scraping ring. It uh, is this one here. It is conveniently labeled which side is the top, so which side goes up towards the top of the bore. And this is the compression ring, which goes in the top uh, portion of the piston, and again, conveniently labeled top. Always comes with instructions. Of course, always read your instructions. To install this, you just take the ring you're interested in, stick it in the, uh, the, the groove that you're most interested in, and kind of work it around. Then we take this other ring and we loop it around. Open they all get to see see what's happening here. Then it falls right in. And then we try to do the gaps on opposite sides. So we'll put this ring in this way. Get it to, to go right in the groove there. And work it around to the other side. And there you go. Pretty, pretty simple. To install the bearings just like you did in the mains. There's a little tang on the bearing, a little tang indention for the uh, the rod, and you we just line that up and push that in. Same thing for the cap, tang, tang, line it up, push the bearing in, just like that. And then of course, just like the main bearings, the tang goes to tang when you stick the, the cap together like that. In this case, we did not change the rod bolts because we're cheap, um, but normally we would, we would do that. Okay, we're about to start putting the pistons in the bores to get prepared. We're going to start number one, so the rod journal for number one is far down as possible. And then we've oiled the cylinders. I'm just using WD-40 just because it's convenient. Okay, let's see if we can get this on film. We're going to stick our piston into our ring compressor and we're going to tighten it. Okay, we want the piston just sticking out. Just about that much, just so we can start lying it in the bore. And we want to make sure our ring compressor is super tight. As tight as we can possibly get it. Okay. Next thing, we're going to use liberal amounts of, of uh, assembly lube. We're going to make sure the air for the front is toward the front. We're going to stick it in the bore. You can see how the side here is up a little bit. We want to get the ring compressor tied against the block just by tapping it around. We're then going to try to tighten it one more time just to make absolutely sure. Okay, and then with one clean swoop, we're going to try to shove this thing in the bore. It looks like we did it on our first try. So we're going to push this down until it's at the uh, till it's seated, and the bearing fell off. So we got to fix that. Okay, we've got the rod pushed all the way, or piston pushed all the way down the bore, 
and uh, we've put on some plastic gauge because we're going to check these old clearances as well. And so on the cap side, we're not going to put any assembly lube right now because we're, we're checking oil clearances. Once we do that, we'll pull this apart, pull the pla if the plastic gauge is good, uh, the clearance is good, then we'll put it back together with assembly lube. But uh, until then, we're going to go tang to tang. So tang here, tang's on the other side. And I've got 30 weight uh, engine oil on the threads for the connecting rods as per the spec. The spec is also 33 foot-pounds of torque, so we're going to stick on our rod, our nuts for the connecting rods, find the way it was for the factory, and we're going to torque those, then we're going to pull it back apart and check that oil clearance. Normally we would change the rod bolts, however the cost of that was was a little much for our little lemons car, and so uh, we're going to run the, reuse the rod bolts we had before. I might be regretting that later when we're throwing rods through things, but until then we'll see how it goes. So we, we torqued it 33 foot-pounds, we've now loosened it. We're going to take the cap back off. And now you can see the deformation of the plastic gauge. We can check that against the scale. And. I'm going to go with one and a half thousandths. Our tolerance is one to two thousandths, so we're right in the sweet spot of that. So we're going to clean the plastic gauge off and put this back together for real. Okay, we've cleaned the plastic gauge off, we're ready to put our country rod cap on for real. So again, now we're going to use liberal amounts of assembly lube and tang to tang. Now we put our nuts back on. And now we're going to torque it to 33 foot pounds. And then we're done with number one. And we're going to do that for the other four, or I mean, excuse me, the other three uh, connecting rods and pistons. Next thing we got to do is check the clearances on the oil pump. So first you want to assemble the gears to where the two marks are together. You want to rotate it through a couple times make sure it spins freely. Then you want to check the backlash. And the backlash for this is like two tenths of a thousandths to eight thousandths um, or 0.2 millimeters. This is 0.10 millimeters. It fits just fine between the the mesh of the gears. If we go to 0.15, it doesn't fit, so we got plenty of backlash there. The other thing to check is uh, how much clearance between the top of the gear and the the, the face of the cover. Uh, and the minimum here, uh, I can't remember, is like 0.15 millimeters. I can stick a 0.06. Uh, I cannot stick a 0.1, so we have somewhere between 0.06 and 0.1, which is plenty of clearance uh, between this top face and the gears themselves. So when this gets put together, it should operate just fine. Another thing in the cover, uh, this portion here is a little spring-operated valve, and the valve opens to dump pressure. So this is kind of like uh, how the top end of the pressure is set, uh, and the Good old hot rodding days we'd pull this out and shim it to get a little more spring uh, to, to raise the spring rate 
which would then uh, raise the amount of pressure before it starts relieving that pressure. Uh, given that this has been uh, not only pressed in, but then it has these indentions there, that'd be very hard. And I just don't think it's probably necessary in this case anyway. So we're just going to assemble. Now that we've got the pump uh, checked, we're going to assemble it and, uh, and install it. Before I put the oil pan on, I want to tell you all something. So this is the, uh, the gear to drive the oil pump. This is the shaft the oil pump is driven off of. You see this indent, this, uh, this tang here. This interfaces with the bottom of the distributor. So when the distributor is turning, the oil pump shaft is turning. We may we want to pre-oil the engine before we, we fire up the first time, build oil pressure. And so we can do that by removing the distributor. And then I've taken a socket and I've ground a groove into it that matches this. And so we'll be able to uh, uh, come in through the distributor hole with this on a drill, spin this, spin the oil pump, build pressure, and we can pre-oil the engine before we, we try to start it. Installation is pretty easy. You just stick it in place. Move some oil in there. Get our long bolts. Get our short bolts for the cover. There's no gasket or anything with an oil pump. torque these to 15 foot-pounds or call it done. One thing I want to point out is that our engine is going to sit at an angle in the car and this comes uh, into play particularly in the oil pan. Uh, so if we, if we pan down we can see the baffle for the oil pan. Okay so we see this is level so this will be about the oil level in our oil pan. And you can see just how close that oil comes to the crankshaft, particularly if hard acceleration, oil sloshing up this way, getting wrapped around the crankshaft, and that's going to cost us horsepower. So we may uh, end up fabricating a uh, windage tray. So this would be a metal tray that comes in here and kind of blocks the oil from sloshing up into the, uh, into the crankshaft. Uh, that's something uh, It's really dependent on whether or not we can get uh, another bottle of gas for the welder. Um, and Russ is looking into that.